Hey everyone, Mr. Schachter here with Limits Involving Infinity Part 2, Objectives Define Horizontal and Vertical Asymptotes Using Limits. So the definition of a horizontal asymptote in terms of calculus is the line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote if either the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals b or the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals b. So b is just some constant value, and it's real simple. The idea is, if we're going towards infinity, so we're getting really, 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 really big, and we're approaching some value b, let's assume b is right here, if our function is doing whatever we want it to, and then, uh, and then as time goes on, it's kind of, as we approach infinity, getting really, really close to that b value, um, then we have an asymptote. This right here is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so these are often known as end behavior asymptotes because it's the behavior of the of the function at the ends in positive infinity for the right and negative infinity for the left. So if you have an infinite limit that equals a constant, you have a horizontal asymptote. Vertical asymptote. So you have a vertical asymptote if kind of the reverse situation happens. So the line x equals a is a vertical asymptote if either the limit as you approach a from the right is equal to positive or negative infinity, uh, or the limit as x approaches a from the left is equal to positive or negative infinity. In the same situation, here's a nice, um, here's a nice picture for you. But if you have a vertical asymptote like right here, let's say, um, as we approach 0 from the left, we're going down to negative infinity. And as we approach 0 from the right, we're going up to positive infinity. So it doesn't matter which one. You only really need a one-sided limit to prove a vertical asymptote. Because if you have a vertical asymptote on the left, you're obviously not going to pass through it on the right or anything wacky like that. Um, so you really just need a, a one-sided limit to prove you have a vertical asymptote. Let's look at an example. Use graphs and tables to find the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x and all that stuff. So we don't need to do that. Let's just do this algebraically. So um, if we actually find here the, um, yeah, I'm just going to scooch this up a bit more, the limit, all right, chill. The limit, yes, thanks. The limit as uh, x approaches infinity of uh, 2 plus 1 over x. If we actually go and solve this, um, we can just uh, plug the infinity right in. And if you plug an infinity in here, 1 over x is basically going to go to 0. So this thing is just 2. And uh, if we check the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2 plus 1 over x, we have the, the same situation, really. We have um, this is just going to equal 2 because it's 2 uh, plus 1 over negative infinity, which is a really, really tiny um, number, which is basically 0 because it's so insignificant that we don't even have a value place for it. So um, we've got here proof of a, of a horizontal asymptote, y equals 2. Okay, proof that a horizontal asymptote is occurring here at y equals 2 because the limit as x approaches infinity is 2 and the limit as x approaches negative infinity is also 2. So these are the horizontal asymptotes for this function. Let's look at this activity. So this activity says uh, we want to graph a function that satisfies all of these conditions. So hundreds of conditions, lots of conditions. So let's go ahead and pick some stuff out. The first thing I recommend is looking for your asymptotes. So let's see if we can find some. Um, okay, this right here is nice. We've got the limit as x approaches 5 from the left um, is infinity. We also have 5 from the right is, um, is infinity. Uh, let's see what else we have. We've got uh, 2 from the, uh, negative 2 from the left is infinity, and negative 2 from the right uh, is negative infinity. These are all, uh, these are all vertical asymptotes. Because I'm approaching a number and the answer is infinity, which means this thing is like rapidly shooting up or downwards. So those are all vertical asymptotes. Let's, uh, let's look at what else we have. We've got an infinite limit here. As we approach uh, infinity is negative 1. And we have a, an infinite limit here. Uh, that as we approach negative infinity, it's 0. Those are two horizontal asymptotes. Those are two horizontal asymptotes, okay? So we've got an infinity and uh, negative infinity. And then uh, this last one. This last one is just a coordinate point. Uh, as we approach 1, it should equal 2. That just means the coordinate 1, 2 should be on the graph. So I think we have enough information to try to graph this thing. Let's give it a shot. So let's see. Let's do it in black. And here's my coordinate plane. Let's start with my vertical asymptotes. So it looks like I'm approaching 5 from the left and the right and negative 2. So those are my vertical asymptotes, actually. We'll get these. So negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
These are my vertical asymptotes. So I'm just going to go. Sure, there we go. All right, so let's first examine this right here. So this one is the limit as x approaches 5 from the left is positive infinity. So that means as I come in uh, from the left side, we're going up to positive infinity. So I'm just going to kind of put this little arrow going here. Um, and then the next one I'll look at is 5 from the right is infinity. So that's um, 5 from the right, which is going to be on this side, and we're going up to infinity. Uh, next I'm going to look at two, uh, negative 2 from the left is going to positive infinity. So negative 2 from the left side is going to positive infinity. And uh, negative 2 from the right side is going down to negative infinity. So we'll kind of just put that one down here. So I believe all of my vertical asymptotes are complete. Uh, let's now take a look at my coordinate point, 1 comma 2, 1, let's do it in blue, 1 comma 2, 1, 2, 1 comma 2 is like right here. So I think I've got an idea of what my middle piece needs to look like. It needs to kind of go like that a little bit, something like that. Um, and then as we go to, so this condition's all set, as we go to positive infinity, this thing needs to approach negative 1. As we go to positive infinity, this thing needs to approach negative 1. So I'm going to go down here. Um, here is negative 1 right there. So as we go down here, we're going to go and get really, 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 really close to, but not ever touching negative 1. So there's my horizontal asymptote for my end behavior. So that's done. And then uh, last but not least, negative infinity is going to 0. So that's my last one. We're just basically going to get really, really close to 0 on this side. Okay, and of course, don't worry too much about this. Um, there are certain functions that do uh, pass through horizontal asymptotes, so that's not a problem that this function does that. So this is just one of many examples you probably could have produced to satisfy those conditions. Last example. Um, find the vertical asymptotes of the secant function, and I put a graph here for you if you needed some help graphing it. So let's, let's examine. First of all, uh, it looks like the very first uh, vertical asymptote occurs right here. And this is at pi over 2. So um, uh, using calculus as proof, we could say the limit as, uh, as x approaches pi over 2 from the right. So we're coming in from the right side of pi over 2. looks like it's going down to negative infinity. So of f of x equals, and we'll just call it secant. You know what? We'll just call it secant. Secant x is negative infinity. And then uh, let's check the other side, the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left of secant x. So now we're coming in from the left side, and we're going up to positive infinity. So positive infinity. That's the uh, definition of a vertical asymptote. And you can kind of continue this pattern. It looks like the next instance is going to occur right here, right here at uh, 3 pi, 3 pi over 2. And it's going to repeat itself. Uh, and you could also go in the negative direction, negative pi over 2 and negative 3 pi over 2. Um, so all in all, you're going to have uh, vertical asymptotes. Um, vertical asymptotes are going to occur at, um, so pi over 2 plus uh, n pi, you could say, where n is any integer. Uh, z is the uh, uh, set of all integers. n is an element of your integers. This just means that n is any integers n is any integer. So any integer n, negative 3, negative 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you plug that in and then you'll have an iteration of a vertical asymptote for the secant x. So there's an infinite number of them, um, which is very clear via the picture. And so we kind of use limits to prove that we have uh, vertical asymptotes at those values.